Hello and welcome to another episode of The Laws of Minecraft with me, Law from Chaos. Okay, so today I wanted to talk about a little known use for, though it's becoming more well known, uh, for the Force Wrench from Darkcraft. And it's one that is a cross, it's a cross use, um, something that can be used within um, uh, Thumbcraft if you've got Thumbcraft installed as well. And so what it is, is you can take apart nodes. You can uh, not just take apart, you can uh, wrench them. That's the, the right word for it. Now, it will require some fuel to be in the force wrench, and the typical button for most people is F or Shift F, Shift F in order to get into this GUI here. If I can get to it. There it is. So you're going to fill it with liquid force. In this case, I just created some force cans, put them in here, and they will continue to fill this out for me. So if I put it in... Some as soon as it drops down a thousand, it'll fill up the next thousand from one of these. Now I uh, I'm in creative, so I used a uh, that to create a bunch of them, so I could kind of just show you how it works. Because uh, there's a very specific way in which this functions. So if, if I take a look at these, like you can see, this one here is normal, and this one here is normal and fading. Now this one is quite a bit bigger than this one. Uh, but this one is normal and not going away, so I mean, there's some specific uses. So I'm going to first wrench this one. I'm going to pick that up, and so this one is right here. And we know this is our normal one on the left, and this is our one that's fading. So we have this one on the right. Uh, and I'm just going to switch into normal mode here. Game okay, mode zero. And so I can just have a regular crafting bench. So this is our normal one. If we put this here and put this here, we'll have the option to get a new one out. But it's not showing us what we're going to produce. Now, from what I understand, the one on the right will contribute its uh, aspects to the one on the left, but the one on the left is what determines what um, Uh, as not aspect, but uh, characteristics the node has. So if it's so this one's fading, so the fading should go away because the, this one is just a normal one, and that's what should be dominant. And it should just add up these two together. Uh huh. Perfect. So it's 161, perfectly normal node. As you can see, it's not doing that weird fading thing anymore. If I just take a yep, completely normal. It's exactly what we want. So I mean, there's this is normal and bright. So for example, if we want to take this one and combine it with this. Again, we're going to get a much larger node. We're putting this on the left, and it's just going to combine air, and then we're going to get that just like this. So now we got a 250, and it's a normal, large, bright node. Now this can uh, this interaction with the force wrench before you get ridiculously excited uh, <laughs> can only happen if it's enabled properly in settings. most it, By default, it's usually off. This is a very fun thing to do, and if you want to give it to your players on a server, that is awesome. Um, but for all those people who are doing it like in single player want to be able to do it, what you need to do is go into uh, your config files for Darkcraft, and it's a wrenchables.txt is the file you need to edit. And so I suggest editing it with something like Notepad++, because that will actually let you see what's going on. Because if you don't do that, you can't quite see what actually works. Because Notepad++ will separate it into lines for you. And what the line you need to edit is thomcraft.common.tiles.tile node. And what they did essentially was just put um, numeric symbols on it. The uh, the number symbol. Is that the, uh, it's not the ampersand. What is that? Pound? Pound sign, I think. Uh, on both ends of it. And if you just remove those, it'll become an actual line of text and it will edit and use that properly and let you now wrench nodes. Now obviously there's a lot of uses for this and so I'm going to go ahead and um, wrench up this one. Now this is a sinister node and there's a, there's a hungry node over here that's trying to pull me in. So I'm going to pull this one up and then I'm going to attach it to this one right here. So if you put this down, I'm going to put this down right here so we can take a look at it. You see it's already got a little air. Um, Exonymous, hunger, darkness, water, death, chaos.
chaos. So it's got a lot of elements in already. But we don't really want sinister. This is sinister, right? Yeah. Don't really want sinister because sinister will spawn angry zombies and cause all sorts of other problems. So not exactly ideal for that reason. So we're going to put this on the right. We want to add our aspects to another node. This one right here. And so if we take this and put this here, we'll get our node out. Now, nodes act in a very specific way. Uh, as you can see now, its, it's maximum is 332, and it's got, doesn't have that giant black middle circle anymore. It's a normal bright. Now nodes, you can see on here, 16 fire, 671 chaos, and so on. So it's not going to add in all the really complicated node types, which is sad, but understandable. But I'm not certain if it will keep them. So I'm going to actually do uh, something different. And there's a reason for this that's relevant. <laughs> I died! Alright, I'm going to go into game mode creative so I can do this safely. Yeah, and it will have stolen my uh, various items. So we just need a, um, goggles. Yeah, be very careful with hungry nuts. They can be extremely useful for certain things, but they have their dangers also. And I'm doing a very specific test because there's certain things you can do with hungry nuts and only hungry nuts, and you can combine those with other things in Thumbcraft. And if that's if that actually works the way it ought to then you could do some incredible things with it. But I do want to verify that it actually works that way first. So force wrench and then canister now. Let's do force again. Let's see what we find. So we're going to get into our GUI here, and we're going to fill that up, and we're going to put this on our character so we can see. Okay. So we get a couple of hungry nodes here. So one here. So I'm just going to pick this up right now. And you can see it's got something that's not common, the hungry symbol. So I want to see if we can preserve that. So if we can, there's some other things we can do with it. Oh, this has got Mesas. Great. Let's just create a crafting bench real quick. So let's just take a quick look here. So this is the hungry one. We want to preserve its characteristics. So I want to see if it will preserve them. Nope. Okay, so this only lets you do things with basics. Still incredibly useful because, to be honest, you don't really need anything beyond the basics. I'm just going to destroy that one. That's okay. E even if it only keeps the basics, there are specific very good uses for it, and I can actually think of a way around that anyway. So yeah, create the six basics like this. There, this actually only has the five, but there's uh, it's only missing order. Let's get let's get one that has order, and we'll demonstrate that. Let's just break our other. Yeah, that's pure. Because there's other modifications that can be done. So. You guys are probably wondering what I'm doing exactly. 
Well, that's a good question. Okay. So I've created this. It's very large. Uh, it's just going to kind of keep expanding, and all of these will eventually get to 362. The largest node size is the size for every single piece of it. So I want to give some advice for how to deal with this later then. Okay, so there's a lot of Thomcraft stuff, and I want to pull up something that you want to use. This is called a node modifier. Now, if we take this and we use the traditional method and we end up bottling it, making a node in a jar, we might as well just give ourselves one see what type it is. It doesn't appear to have anything in it, does it? I think it's just... Okay, so these can a change the aspects in them, they can do a bunch of other things, and you might be looking at it and going, okay, well, why would we want to do this? This obviously is a much less efficient way to do it, but there is one particular thing that would make this useful, and that is this. You can add Hungry to it, and as anybody, I don't know if everybody knows, if you don't know, Hungry nodes can be fed materials, and they will t then take on the aspects of that material. So the first thing to do if you have both of these enabled is to make something like a super node like this. So that you do this and uh, you know you can make something uh, substantially larger than this. Uh, if I was to say add every single one of these in for example. And then just leave it as you know a bright node. Let's get a thumb. So it's normal and bright, right? Which is exactly what we want. So we add in other things, and I think actually pure is harder to get than bright from this machine here. So if you can find something that's both pure and bright, that is the ideal starting point. But I don't know if that's possible. I'm always trying to be aware of what's possible. Now be aware, the more aspects something has, the stronger the hunger aspect of it, I believe, is. The more powerful that is. So you will have to be careful with it. Uh, one thing of note with these ones, if you're creating super notes, it might be worth destroying these. Something like this, that has Tempest or, or no Tempest. Temporal time, whatever, and then tempestuous, right? The weather, because then you could feed those ethereal essence into a hungry node in order to give it that aspect. Now, it does take quite a bit of power, just so everybody knows, or not power, but uh, quite a bit of aspect. A lot of times, before a hungry node will actually acquire that aspect, so it may or may not work. But if you can find one that's pure and bright, and then add hungry to it. That may be the best method, and it'll be inside this. So then you can put it down and then break this somewhere to safely re-hunger it, and then you can... Uh, what you'll want to do is use another block in order to be as safe as possible. Uh, and I, suspect, I suggest you have something that resists falling damage, because it will throw you really high up in the air and cause you problems if you're not extraordinarily careful. And that is the block mover. Now, if you don't have all of these, this will be a lot harder to do. But this one can just take nodes and put them up and down. Very simple. It uses some of its durability normally. I'm a creative, so it's not doing that. But it doesn't take that much durability. You can probably get through a good, I don't know, 20, 30 uses. So that is my suggestions and points on what you can do when Thomcraft is working. You can, I mean, you could just create a super node like this. A large, bright one with each one being a couple thousand. That will recharge any wand. But if you want instead aspects in it, for whatever reason, I can think of a couple ones. One is to fill it with a bunch of aspects, let it fill up completely, and then break it for the ethereal essence. Not a bad idea, especially if you want to use uh, get aura uh, essence, because that one you can then you reuse in here to make bright nodes and pure nodes and stuff. So you could do multiple pure and bright nodes with that. And then you could, you know, create more and break them and then you have more to create 
more brightness, etc. So it's kind of a, just a cycle that you can do if you want to. This thing can add more to an aspect, uh, increase the aspect, but to be honest, this is by far the fastest method. So I've dragged on about what you can do with this, what's possible, what's not possible, and so on. If anybody has any questions, suggestions, anything like that that I should also add into here, please let me know and I'll be happy to do so. Um, I believe that's everything, so I'll see you guys in the next episode.